So I'm about to start a project that's going to make probably the most significant and profound difference in the way the house looks. That's the siding. Hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple Live Free. I've been waiting for a long time to be able to get this siding done because it, it just, especially this north end of the house, it looks pretty nasty and it just needs to be done. Now we are planning to eventually reside the entire house. But for now, for this project, I'm gonna be doing the north end here and of course wrapping around the, the addition back there to cover that up. And that'll be the first process in uh, reciting the entire house. The rest of the house will have to be done later. For the main thing right now, I'm just trying to get that, that addition covered with siding. So as you can see, this being the north side of the house, it never gets sun. And so we get this stuff that grows on here and this needs to be washed every once in a while. I have not done it because I knew I was going to reside it and I didn't want to waste my time. Also you can see that uh, this is getting old and brittle. I have no idea how long it's been there and it's starting to crack up in several places so it, it really needs to be done. Now Barry and I have a complete set of ladders and walk boards and everything that we need to be able to reach all the way up there to the peak. However, Right now it's on loan to another contractor who's using it. He's almost finished with it. But for now, of course the first thing I need to do is take off the old siding. So for now I'm just going to take it off as far up as I can reach. And then I can do the, re the siding down below there. And once I get the level set here of where the siding goes, then I can wrap all the way around the addition out there. So I can actually do quite a bit before I get the ladders that I need to finish the peak. So let's get started. First thing is to tear off the old siding. Actually I was wrong. First thing I need to do is take all of this stuff loose from the wall so I can pull the siding out from behind it. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. So now I've got all this stuff loose from the wall. The meter is just kind of hanging there by the base and also where the wire goes in through there. So now I'll be able to pull it out just far enough to get the siding back in there. So the next thing to do is start taking off all of this old siding. So this is the shed that I built two years ago, two and a half years ago when we moved into this house. Can't believe we've been here that long. <laughs> but notice this is white siding, I mean white trim on gray siding. And uh, the house is white on white, but I did this, we like the gray, the white on gray, and so we're going to match the house, the new siding on the house to this. So like I said, the house is all white. Now we're going to be putting the gray over here and a wrap around the addition on the end. But the white here, eventually we want to do gray all the way around. But the white here is still in fairly good shape and we're going to be leaving it for right now. We wanted to finish this because we had to do the, the addition anyway. But this is really nasty looking. And putting new gray siding on there is going to look much better. This is old, but it looks in good shape. From the road, it doesn't look bad at all. The only difference is it's going to be white on one side and gray on the other side. We hope to finish the rest of the house probably sometime like next summer. We just simply don't have the time or the money to do all of it right now. And for you OCD people, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to have two different colors. But <clears throat> I think it'll be fine until we can eventually get it all done. We really like the, the white trim with the gray siding.
Now even though this corner post is white, I'm going to replace it with a new white corner post because this is kind of faded and kind of brittle and if it's all going to be new vinyl I want the corner post to match. But replacing a corner post without replacing the siding can be kind of difficult because this is the front part of the house and I'm not replacing this siding yet. This corner post is actually nailed underneath of the siding. So getting it out is difficult and putting in the new one is even worse because you can't get in there to nail the new one. We got to try to pry the nails out from this side. See that wasp nest? I don't know if you remember when I was working in the back I took all of those uh, pieces of siding down and the whole thing was completely covered underneath with wasp nests. So far here on this I've only ran into a couple and they're all dead so so far it hasn't been any issues. I'm so sorry but the next two clips have no audio. <laughs> So this is the corner post and you put it right against the corner and then you nail it right there. And then once the nail is nailed in place, you slide the siding into this groove on top of the nail. So the nail is covered by the siding and you can't see it. You can't get to it. Now I'm talking here, but I'm not sure exactly what I was saying. However, I have to take that post and slide it in behind the existing siding and the nailing flange goes behind it. And then the siding slides into that notch that I showed you earlier. Then once I get the front side slid in behind the siding where it belongs, then on the other side, I'm free to nail it because the siding is not in the way. So now I've got this side nailed in place, so it's not going anywhere. And on this side, it's just slid in there it would pull out and there really isn't any way for me to nail it unless I take all the siding off so I'm just basically going to have to leave it like that maybe I can put a surface nail in there because this siding is going to be replaced eventually yeah that'll keep it from pulling out and then when I replace this siding, I can take that nail out and nail it properly. I've never done that before. I don't know why that's a good solution. Now this back corner is much easier because it's new construction. This roof is at a 312 pitch, which means for every 12 inches it goes out, it drops down three inches. So I put a 312 angle on here so it fits right up in there and I cut the length
I've got this side nailed and when you nail that side you got to make sure that it's square if you bring it out like this when you nail it then this sticks way out if you bring it like that then this is too flat you need to make sure that this is parallel straight with that So now the corner is nice and straight with the walls both ways. So I put the J-strip all around the edges to, to hide the, the ragged edge of the siding when I put the siding on. Now I generally put uh, caulk around the doors and windows here before I put the siding or the J-strip on. It's not completely necessary, especially underneath of this four foot eave, but it's just going to uh, basically make it a little bit more weather tight and help to uh, eliminate a few drafts. This is clear silicone. I just put it right there in the corner like that. And then press this into it before I nail it in. It just makes a draft tight seal behind the J strip. It was a bear getting the old siding out from, on, from behind here. I had to take the cover off, take all the bolts out that hold it to the wall, and then uh, still the, all the wires go in through the wall down here through a piece of conduit, and this conduit in place is still holding it in place. So I could only pull it out only a very little bit. I got it all out of there now, but boy, that was tough. Now this is the starter strip. You have to put along the bottom, and that holds the, the first piece of siding that you put on there. I'm reusing the starter strip over on the other side. I have not removed it. I just have to measure this one to make sure that it's the same height as the one over there, otherwise the siding won't match up up here. Now this is the original starter strip from the old siding. I'm not taking that off, I'm just re reusing it. And you just take this lip on the bottom and lock it right into there. And that's what holds the first piece in place. Just like that.
This thunderstorm's been headed this way for about a half hour. Now it's starting to rain. Okay, so this was pretty difficult, but I did get it done. I took off the screws that hold it to the wall, but down right about here, there's a piece of conduit the same size as this that goes straight back into the wall and it goes into the, uh, the panel on the other side where all the circuit breakers are. So when I took all the screws off, I could only move this out just a little bit. And I, it was a real struggle to get the old siding out around that conduit. And then to put the new siding in, I had to estimate where that conduit was and cut a notch around it to put it in there. So I got it done, but I did not record it because it was slow and tedious and it would not have made a good film uh, clip. But anyway, from here on up, there's nothing back here and I'll just be able to slide it in there. Uh, and so it should be much easier. So I'm glad to have that done. This was the, the biggest problem of the job right here. Okay, so I just found my first live wasp nest. I knew there was going to have to be something like that somewhere. And there it is. Fortunately, there are not many wasps, but they're definitely still there. Now that I've got this lower part done and I've got this reattached at the bottom, this upper part, it'll just slide right in behind. Okay, that was much more difficult than I expected because there's some stuff back there that kept grabbing it, but at least I got it in there. Now I've been working on this siding for the past couple of days, but it's at this point right here where we actually closed on the house that we just bought to do the renovation. So for the past couple of days, I've been working over there, but I still want to, you know, get some work done on this house, like I mentioned. So this is Saturday. We're not working in the, in the uh, flip house. So I'm going to be spending a couple more hours on this. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep hacking away at it an hour here, an hour there, whenever I have a couple of, of hours to spare. And hopefully, eventually, I'll get this siding done. 
I'm really excited to get it done because it really makes a difference in how the house looks. Now underneath of the windows, we use this piece right here. It's a, it's a piece of vinyl that's a cap for the top of it. And this was the old one that was there, but I just left it in place. And what I'm going to do is cut a short piece of vinyl that will slide up in there. And then there's this tool that actually makes like a barb right there uh, on the vinyl. So then you just go along and put these barbs in there. And then that just slides up right inside of there and hooks underneath and it won't pull out. And that's what holds that vinyl in place. So I'll be doing that all the way along here. So now I've got this piece cut and I've got those barbs all the way along here. So now you can see this piece slid up inside of this cap piece and the barbs are up inside of there holding it in place and it's just locked in place without even any nails showing. It's a pretty cool system. I like that little barb tool. Okay, I think now it's been probably at least three weeks, maybe even more, since I've done any work on the siding on our house because I've been working over at the flip house, renovation house that we're working on. But I hate leaving stuff half done and I want to get this thing finished, so I'm taking the day today, at least a few hours uh, to do as much as I can. Um, I also wanted to mention that many of you were concerned about our, our new little deck that doesn't have any railing on it. Elizabeth and I discussed it once again and we just determined that it's just not necessary to put a railing all the way around. However, she did have a little bit of trouble going up and down the steps uh, with her balance. So <clears throat> I have now, I didn't record it, but I replaced those old temporary steps with the permanent steps and I put a railing here just for the steps so that she has something to grab onto when she's going up and down the steps. She's completely happy with that. That's all that we need. The deck is low enough that code does not require a railing, but this is very helpful for her. Now the next piece that I have to do here is kind of slow and tedious because it's this one right here and it's not tall enough to fit the whole thing. That's 11 inches and I've only got like 10 there. So I'm going to have to rip it down and then I've got to put this cap uh, piece up here and put those barbs in it like I showed you and slide it in up there to hold it in place. And then I've also got a notch around this thing. So it's going to be kind of slow and tedious to get that all done. And then I've also got a notch around the top of the door. So it's a real puzzle piece. Okay, so now I've got the end cut. I've got it ripped down and the barbs put in there. I got this notch for the door cut out. Let's see how this works.
not an easy thing to get in here. So I got this piece in, all the notches fit, fit there, fit here, got it up into the top cap up here. Now over here, the end of this piece of vinyl, if I hadn't cut it off, was only about out here. So instead of trying to make that notch in this piece, I just cut it off right here. I'll bring this next one down and right straight across and put the seam right there. It's much easier to do than trying to figure out that notch. Now for this next piece, it's made much easier by the fact that I have, I was able to take off this old piece that was up there and I already have the angle. So I don't have to do any figuring to figure the angle. That makes it so much easier. end cut there was four inches right there and then I'm also have to going to cut out a notch here for the top of the window fits in. But since the last nail that holds this is all the way up there, I'm going to take one little white aluminum finishing nail and stick it in right here. That little nail will never be noticed. It holds it in nice and tight. So I think this whole area worked out okay. I could have done something better here. It is what it is. So now that I got that last piece in up there, that was tedious and time consuming. I can pretty much just fly with the rest of this. I need to take the old siding off and then put up the new. Now, I thought that I was going to have access to Barry's walk boards. He's got a couple ladders to set up a walk board up there where I can just walk right back and forth. But for whatever reason, they're still not available to me. Somebody else is still using them. So I'm going to have to use this uh, step ladder. It's an eight foot step ladder. I got to move it every time I'm going to nail something. It's a pain in the neck. It's much slower, but it still can be done. And you do what you got to do, right? <laughs> So that's done. I found quite a few wasp nests and mud dauber nests back behind the vinyl. I was very surprised that every single one of them was dead. There weren't any live nests at all, so that made me very happy. <laughs> I have that gable vent up there. I'm going to keep that up there. It's vinyl. I just need to wash it up a little bit, get some of the green mold off of it. Or it's not mold, it's like lichen or something. Moss. Just clean that up a little bit, it'll be fine. Dear one, what do you think of our new siding? Oh, it's it's just looking like so classy, and it 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 works. It looks like a new house. <laughs> yeah. Not only did it get rid of that nasty old siding that was there, 
that had growth all over it and stuff. But now the addition looks like it's supposed to be part of the house. Yeah, it blends it, it all together. It, it blends it all together. It doesn't look like, oh, somebody's putting an addition on the house. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It, it looks awesome. Another thing that's interesting is the front is still the old siding, which is white. Yes. The side that I just put on is gray, and you can see the color difference down there. Um, move back a little so they yeah, can see it. Yeah, Am I out of the way? Yeah, where am I? Right here, the white <laughs> and the gray. Uh, but up here you can see the difference, but down here it looks like, just because of the sun, it looks like the gray is just in shadow and you can't even tell it's white. I mean, you can't even tell it's gray. It just looks like white in shadow. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. It's kind of cool. When the sun is covered with clouds, then you can see the difference between the white and gray. But I just thought that was interesting. Well, you know, eventually we want to have the whole place sided with the gray, with the white trim, just like our shed has been. Yeah. But yeah. this, I was wondering how weird this was going to be with us having part of it done and not the front. It's actually working amazingly well. Yeah. It looks nice. Yeah, we will be siding the rest of the house in the gray, the new siding. With everything else I'm doing with my flip house renovation and all that kind of stuff, the rest of this siding won't be done until next year. But at least we got it weathered in, uh, got the addition weathered in, and it's all looking good. Yeah, yeah, it looks finished. It's so, very nice. Many of you were worried that I wouldn't work on this at all until I finished the flip house. This is definitely slowed down, but as you can see, I'm still doing some work on it. So sure. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> yep. It looks gorgeous. Okay, thanks for watching. Live simple. Live free. You be blessed. Love you guys. We will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.